guys welcome back to my art channel and if you're new hi I'm May and I make digital fluid art with cells and digital pour art and today we're gonna be looking at stamped cells and the cell brushes that I created and a brush that will work kind of similar on procreate as well so everything that we're doing is in procreate so once you have procreate open we'll get started creating a new canvas with a width of 5,000 and a height of 3,500, a DPI of 1,000. Again, I do this resolution because I do sell my artwork online, so you need to have a high resolution when printing your images on products. However, you can do whatever size you want with whatever DPI. Just keep in mind, if you do it smaller than this, your dimensions will be a bit different and same if you made it larger. So once you have your dimensions, you're gonna hit Create and shrink that canvas size down so we can see all the edges. Now, before we can play with our stamp cells and the brushes that I made, we need to create a color palette. I was already kind of playing around with colors and kind of like this fall kind of color palette here. Feel free to take a screenshot and add these colors to your Procreate palette if you'd like to follow along. And the brush we'll be using today is under painting and called Temar. And the other brush we'll be working with is water, or it's underwater, or no, it's not, sorry. I always forget where this one is. I think it's under, yeah, it's under elements, sorry. And we're gonna be working with water. But for now, we'll be doing with Tamar under painting. And first we'll create our digital fluid art with our Tamar brush. So you always want your base before we start playing around with cells. Um, I think I can actually lay down a white base. And again, the easiest way to make white, because I always get bad. I'm not good at guessing. Just go to your disk and adjust the settings and drag it over. And now you can see our layer is white. Start with the greens. And we're doing a size of about... 45, oh, let's do 50-ish. <laughs> and then keep in mind, I find it easier to work with my preferences and my brush cursor activated so I can see the size of the brush I'm working with. And it makes it a little easier. Back to that green. This brush has some very interesting dimension to it. Then we're just going to lay down our colors. This would be a good time to have some music on in the background and just relax. But with the tutorial, I want you guys to be able to hear me. And then some of that yellow for some accents. All right. And then once you have the colors that you like, we're going to go into liquify, shrink the canvas down even further so we can see the edges, and push around the paint till we have a digital pour art that we like. I like to start with a distortion fairly high. So that way, do around 57%, so it kind of gets that wiggle, wet look. And the sides of about, let's do 65. And pressure and momentum at max. And again, we're just gonna gently move those colors around. Like I said, you don't have to move them all the way off the canvas too. You can kind of work with some negative space, which kind of creates its own interesting look as well, and quite pretty. And play with different distortions levels to get it how you like. Just 
which I think is pretty cool. Kind of looks like a star <laughs> from far away. Let me pull out some of these edges so it looks a little less star-like. Looking pretty interesting. Now I find if you kind of want that blown edge look, you can play with it a little bit with your twirl options here. And I find if you lower, actually I'll probably leave it pretty high, and adjust your size because you want to work in smaller spaces. And if you just hold the brush on the canvas, it'll just make these like spiral little patterns. But if, as you put your brush down, if you drag it, it kind of creates a bit of a pulled look, like so. And I find if you drop your momentum down and pull the edges slightly, you get that kind of dragged look, which is kind of interesting. Play with the pressure a little bit. If you drop the distortion down, it will create wider spirals and less of them, so that's why I keep the distortion up high. But again, you just kind of pull. And the longer you hold it, the more kind of spirally it will look, and you can kind of get those edges. And it doesn't quite look like how it would with it being poured, but what you can do then is take your push option and put everything back up to max and then you can play with those new edges that you've created to give it more of that kind of blown out look which is kind of interesting. And then you can also, if you want to play with it a bit more and create a bit more texture within your painting, drop your pressure and momentum of them a bit and you can very gently bring it into your canvas where if some of your lines you feel are too straight and don't have that kind of ripply liquid effect, you can bring it in and just push very lightly and it'll start to twirl the paint around a little bit. I give it that ripple effect, which I think is really pretty. Again, you can drop the distortion down and it will just move it in larger spirals, which can kind of give you that kind of spiraled look that you can get on the edges and then you can rotate it the other way to get more of a, oops, my distortion went up higher. As you can see, it's curling it in one way with the lower, and you can do it the other way. You kind of get those kind of twisted edges, which is kind of quite pretty. And then you can also twirl. You want a little more of a spiral in the artwork instead of it just being or more emphasis on the twirl that's already there. It's just remembering how the left and right spin and working with the twirl options to get more of that swirly kind of look. Like so. I think that looks pretty good. Now we're going to exit liquify because the next step is using brushes that I already created and we'll walk through them. I'm currently working on blender brushes. I've been working on them for about six months and they're still not quite where I want them. But I created these over a year ago and I have about 26 designs and they all have three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And the small, medium, large is in scale with a canvas of 5,000 by 3,500. If you were to use these brushes on a canvas smaller, they would be look larger. And if you're working on a canvas 
bigger, the brush sizes would look smaller. But we'll just actually go through. I'll darken this color and we can run through and see. They're all continuous um, pattern brushes as well. But we'll run through all of them quickly and give you see what they all look like. And as you can see, you can, it's a little hard to see, but because it's small, but you can literally, I'll make my color a little darker, I'll just do black. But you can literally do a whole cell pattern right over your entire digital pour art. So that one was small, number one. I just named them one through 26 just because I thought it'd be kind of dorky to give them weird names. And I just named them and organized them by size. And then this is medium. Oops, that's my water bottle. You should always stay hydrated. And large. Like I said, it took quite a while to figure out doing the continuous pattern, but I think they turned out pretty cool. I like this one, kind of almost looks like spider webs or broken glass. Oh. Medium. And then we'll go to number four. Medium. And large. I said I haven't really offered these for sale because it's taken me years to kind of figure out how what patterns I liked, how to and to create a continuous pattern and drawing that continuous pattern. But let me know in the comments if this would be something you guys would be interested in purchasing because I could make them for sale. That one was pattern number four. Number five. One small. Medium, number five. Number six pattern on medium. I'm gonna do number seven on medium. And I tend to do this with my images anyway. I'll go through all my brushes and see what pattern I think fits well with what came out on my digital pour art. This one's number eight, oops, medium. Nine on medium. Ten on medium. Eleven on medium. Twelve on medium. Thirteen on medium. That one has a bit of square pattern. And then fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. So there's quite a lot of them. And they all have kind of their own different ideas. 17. 18. 19. 
These ones I do large because these ones actually create a pull pattern. So the reason why I'm doing this on large is, oops, I should probably do that one on medium actually. So 25 and 26 are a bit different. These ones are not continuous patterns because they are where it looks like the edge has been blacked out and you and the paint is being dragged down like where they, you took a piece of paper towel with the paint on it and kind of slid it down to create the lace cells. So the reason why I didn't make this a continuous pattern, one, because it was very difficult and I don't think I really could, but the advantage with this one is if you were to do it on a second layer, you could, one faces this way, so if you had a vertical piece, you could crop out the one section and make it larger, and then 26 is the reverse of it. 26 is the this way is the horizontal version of the brush and what you can do which is quite nice when you do it on a second layer so quickly do that again making sure you're on your second layer and I have these diluted a bit so that way you can play with the shading and it's not full opacity when you First, drag your brush. If you do it lighter, it will be a little bit more see-through. So what you want to do with this is go into the cut option and go on rectangle and cut it where you see the pattern and hit copy, delete the bottom section and freeform or move freeform and then you can drag it down and across and it gives you, like I said, like that swiped artwork and then you could even move your acrylic or your digital fluid art or digital pour, pour art over along with this pattern and then draw something on the other side as well and that's actually a pretty cool brush to play with. So those are all 26 of my stamped cell brushes that I've created and like to use to create my digital pour art and there's a few different ways you can use them. But today we'll go first, because one, you don't have my brushes yet, so we'll use the brush that I used to use before I created these on Procreate to create kind of a cell pattern, and it's under elements, and you want to use water. And I usually start on a second layer until I get the feel of how I like it before I'll merge it down. And then I tend to zoom in and work in areas where I want to see cells. So like you said, you can see how the water lays down. You can shrink it and make it a little tinier, depending on how you want. I like you said dark color so you can kind of see how it's working out and how you like it. I find this you might need to edit it a little bit. So you go duplicate, because so I find it's leaving a little too much shadow. And I think if we up the contrast, it might make it a little less yeah so what you're gonna want to do is as you can see I got rid of a lot of the shadow effect and if you go all the way down it's more of the blur effect so you just want to up that contrast just a little bit like so and I usually just create a second brush so that way you still have the original and that's creating more of that pattern now it's still making it a little more like water, so we want it more connected. Which I oops, what did I just move? Oh, I don't know what I just did there. And I can't quite reverse it, so the best way to do it is you just go back into your brush. Oh, oops, I guess because I made a brush. Delete that. Because <laughs> duplicate 
try that again. <laughs> Go down to the contrast and up that contrast. And then let's see if they have anything. So they have an intense glaze, but we did. I think intense glaze is fine. I definitely want the flow. A little bit of burnt edges, maybe. Just seeing if anything is on blur. Which I don't think it is. Actually, there. There's the there's spacing. I think that will help. So you want to turn that spacing down a bit, which I think will make it a more continuous pattern. There we go. So like I said, I used to use this quite a bit to create a kind of a cell-like pattern. And what you do is you zoom in on an area, and make sure you're on your second layer, and whatever color you kind of want to pull those cells and that's what you want to create. And you gently want to just bring your brush down and create that water. And so we can go back in and manipulate it a bit after we're on. Liquify too. But again, just kind of gives a little bit of a cell look. And you can do that in a few places. As well, if you want to bring in the blue into the red, like so, and then pulling the green, oops, again you want to try and do it in one motion so it stays connected, like so, and flare it out a little like that. And using water, you can, like I said, you can still play around with the brush settings. Uh, this is not the one I used to have. I had it where it was connecting more, and I think I changed the movement. I don't know if it was a movement or a stationary grain. So it was just one stamped image instead of it. So it was continuous instead of moving it every time you placed your brush down. So you want to play with those settings, but then you can take it into liquify and play with it even further. So I usually turn, put the distortion down completely to zero. And then I say you can, oops, that was twirl. You want to push. You can kind of push them closer together and further apart to create more of a circular pattern. When you find areas are a little too thick, you can pinch them down a little like so or use your edge tool to bring them in and make the lines a little more smaller. And then you can even use the expand, which is similar to my bubble tutorial, and actually make where there's areas like so, and expand out those edges and actually create kind of little cell pockets water brush and then you can make some kind of more distorted looking ones I'm just getting used to it and playing with it and if you don't like how a certain area turned out because it's on a second layer again you can just go back to edge and bring it back in so it looks like a cell again and that's the one way you can create stamp cells using the water brush under elements on procreate but i tend to use my brushes like i said before and how i like to use them often is on a second layer and go back to my stamp cells and kind of look at the image and see if any of them pop out i think i like number nine or number 10 and with a large, hmm, maybe not large, we'll do again medium. 
and we'll work in. So again, now we're going to pick our color that's close to the edge where you want to pull it in from, which is kind of this greenish color. Oops. Drop your size down and very lightly you can blend it in and then flare it darker and then flare it back out where you kind of want those cells to appear in the pattern that you liked. And I want this pattern to kind of go all over this area so we're going to bring it right up into the green and then fade out like so. I think that looks kind of pretty. And I'm really loving this kind of yellowy gold color. And we can bring it up here into the red and then flare it out. The lighter you hold your brush, the lighter it will fade itself out. Like so. And gives a very interesting pattern. Well, it's kind of like real cells on a real acrylic pour. Um, you can do blender brushes. I'm working on that where it blends the colors that are already existing on the canvas, but which is a really cool way to do it as well. But I find with doing stamp cells for beginning, at least it gives you a little bit more control and where you want to place your colors as well, especially if you don't want your colors to get muddied or diluted if you're not comfortable using a blender brush because they can be a bit tricky to use. So. Again, it's just finding areas where you want to add cells and pulling and picking a color in that area where you want to see them. And you can do them darker and lighter. It's kind of orangey brown colors, kind of goldy colors, kind of pretty. Like so. I said, depending on your pattern too, if you want to do a full scale, oops, it's a bit hard to see, but you can also do white and pull in and have a large amount of cells on your, on your digital pour image, but I find doing it in little sections looks really pretty too. And then you can have it as if the edges, the white are being pulled in as well. Your ideas are endless, what you can do with these brushes. So you can do a full over pattern. I said if you do it really, if you do a dark color, so you could take black and very, very lightly, excuse me, um, and dilute it right down. And you can go over, I've got to fade out even more. And you want to just takes a little bit of playing with. I think it's that similar look that you have here where it almost looks like just barely popping through and looks kind of wet, which is an interesting look as well. Sometimes you don't necessarily want to use black, but you want to use um, a darker color that matches the canvas and do it super, super light to kind of get that wet look. Like so. I think it's looking kind of interesting. Still love this orange color that you're seeing. And you said you just keep working at it until you've laid down enough cells that you're happy with. I'm going to pull in some white for really heavy contrast against some of that red. And because your center is a bit muddied, you can take that pink and bring it down as well. And this ends up turning into quite an interesting image. And the nice thing with it not being a blender brush is now we can actually manipulate it too, because I find these are a bit darker to see. So what I tend to like to do, and most of them that I drew have a pretty rough edge. So what I like to do after I've laid my cells down in a pattern that I like is go into settings there and Gaussian blur and not fully, but just a little bit, like three or 
And I'll go back in and look and zoom in and see if I did a little too much. And that was a little too much. And you can do it again and just do maybe 2%. And it's just kind of helping blur those edges a little bit. And if you find it dulled it a bit, all you have to do to bring back that opacity is just duplicate your layer one or two times and merge it down. And it's brought out the color and the thickness quite a bit. But it's kind of blurred it a bit so it almost looks like it's bleeding into the paint. And then you can, even from there, go to curves, make them even brighter if you want. Or what I like to play with, which is kind of fun sometimes. You can go into settings and bloom and make the bright areas of them kind of pop out, which is kind of pretty. Make them all super glowy, because it almost kind of interesting effect. You find if you don't like, because you can really make it, <laughs> but that will destroy the cells a little bit too much, but you can drop the burn down just to kind of give it that glowy feel and drop how much it fades. And also creates a very interesting pattern. And then from there, if you like how it looks, you can leave it like that. You can even like, give it drop shadows and things like that. Or what I like to do is I like to merge it down. Once I absolutely am happy with it, I'll merge it down to the original layer and then get even more creative with it and go back into liquify and zoom in and kind of manipulate a little bit so it looks like it's kind of working with the paint that's already there. And yeah, just have fun with it. And you can kind of wiggle the screen a bit with the high distortion to kind of give the cells a bit of that distorted look and they're being pushed with the paint. You can pull the edges a little bit like so. Oops, drag that a little too much. And like I said, just kind of wiggle your brush just to kind of make it look like it's bleeding out of the paint itself. And like I said, and this kind of just gives you a little bit more control than a blender brush would. But both have their amazing and desired effects on trying to create an image that looks like an acrylic pour or any kind of pour art. Like I said, just wiggling it around. So it doesn't look so uniform. Like I said, you don't have to do this either. If you prefer the uniform look, you can leave it how it was. I find this just kind of then helps move the paint with the cells to kind of make it look as if though it was coming from it originally as well. I think it's super pretty wiggling the inside a bit there to give them a bit of distortion and then you can lower your brush and kind of wiggle and move the edges a little bit more to really get that paint to mix with the color like so do the same down here The nice thing with all my other tutorials of individual cell types, you can mix and match and all the different types of cells that I've created and you can kind of create some pretty interesting artwork. Again, playing with that distortion. If you find you don't like what you've done, you can always just erase it too, but keep in mind if you hit reset right now, it's going to reset the entire canvas so one way you can work with this is work in sections and once you've done let's say this little part you like how it looks you can move on to separate sections of your canvas and then when you hit reset as you've backed out and gone back into liquify it will leave those other areas so if you really want to be careful that is one other option you can do or again you can take your edge tool and shrink the edges a bit if they got a little too blown out and distorted, like so. So that's like I was mentioning before, if I were to back out right now and go back into liquify because 
I have not played with this one yet. And let's make a giant mess. So high distortion. And let's say, oops, that's, well, there's a great example on the wrong thing. But let's say I really accidentally messed up and I was like, ah, shoot. But because I worked in sections and backed out and come back in, only this little section here is going to reset when I hit reset and not lose all my other work. So that is one advantage with stamp cells and doing it this way is you can work in sections and have a little bit more control, which is kind of nice. Bring that brush size down and play with those edges. Here. Sorry, I'm a bit sniffly. It's winter and with the heat on it makes it very dry inside the house. Excuse me. And now I'm just playing with the last little bit of those edges. Which I think is really pretty. And I like how that turned out. And those are my stamp cells. Now, if you want to add a bit of a splatter to them, you can actually go into spray paint and it's called Flicks. And it actually, and I always do it on a second, always do everything on a second layer so you can always merge it down and then play with it and liquefy and get it to blend in how you want. But okay. I don't know what's up with that brush. There we go. But that's what it looks like, and it's really gorgeous and can really give that feel of those kind of blowtorch bubbles that are haven't quite popped. With this, I kind of like to put the spacing just a little bit and the jitter just off a little bit as well. So that way you really get that blowtorched kind of look. And what I like to do with this one is on a second layer, after you've done your stamped cells, is going in with that color. You either do a darker color in that area Turn the opacity down. I just kind of play with the opacity and kind of bring in those bubbles. And then you can do the lighter color and just stamp them around. And like I said, it gives like that little feel as though those little torched bubbles. Just kind of cute. Like so. You can do them all different opacities. I tend to keep it the same color that's in that area so it looks a little and you can overlap them a bit. Like so. And if there's a lot of red in the area, bring the size down and do some little red guys. And then the cell itself is orange. So then bring in that orange and give it a bit of that texture. And over here it's the dark green, so you can do a bit of the green, the white on the edges. Do a bit of the white, like so. Make it a bit bigger if you want to spread them out a bit. And the lighter you push, the lighter it will lay down on the canvas. White can be a bit stark, so I tend to try and use a color that's in that area so it doesn't overdo it, like so. And a bit of the green to blend out this one, get those little bubbles, and then again the pink, and like so. And then you get this really interesting digital fluid art. 
and those are my stamped brushes that I created. Let me know if you guys would be interested in them. I've never thought of selling them before, but it seems like there's a market for it, so I don't know. Let me know if you'd be interested. Again, there's 26 of them, as you can see along the side here. And they have a fade, or a bit of a dilution, so that way when you put them on the canvas, you can work in a bit of a layer. And they are stamped brushes, so I'll just put it over top of this one so you can see again. Do a second layer. And then you can play with it. So that's what they kind of look like when you lay it down, but depending on the size you choose, whether small, medium, or large, you can really take it into liquify, and as you can see, manipulate it to make it really look like a pour art which is pretty awesome. So that's how you use stamp cells and the brushes that I've created and also using the water brush under elements. Um, and I have tons of other tutorials if you want to check them out. And yeah, let me know what you guys think if you'd be interested in these brushes. And otherwise, we'll see you next time when we create some more art. And thanks for watching. Bye!